coming up tonight on the News at 6, a story we've been following all evening. MTN's Jonathan Ambarian has the latest on the closure of both of Helena's high schools. Plus, latest data shows that we're on a really, really um, drastic spike. Public health officials put COVID-19 data in perspective and explain what numbers you need to pay attention to. From Montana's news leader, this is MTN News at 6. Good evening. Welcome to the News at 6. I'm Marian Davidson. Thanks for joining us. Helena Public Schools leaders announced this afternoon that ongoing staff shortages have forced them to return both of Helena's high schools to fully remote learning starting next week. MTN's Jonathan Ambarian has the details on the decision. Helena Public Schools Superintendent Tyler Ream says the district has so many employees who can't currently work in person that they no longer have the option to keep all schools open for in-person classes. He says shifting Capital and Helena High Schools to online instruction is the best way to limit the impact on families. The two high schools will remain open as planned on Friday. Starting next Monday, they'll close to in-person instruction for two weeks. District leaders will decide by December 3rd whether they can return on Monday, December 7th. Reem says they still aren't seeing coronavirus transmission within schools, but that close to 20% of district employees can't work in the buildings right now. Some because they're on quarantine, and others because they're taking care of someone on quarantine or their usual childcare isn't available. Returning the high schools to remote learning means the district can use high school support staff and substitutes to keep elementary and middle schools open. Reem says they hope to have Helena and Capitol High back to in-person classes by December 7th, but that they'll need the help of the Helena community to flatten the curve and get the local COVID-19 situation under control. In Helena, Jonathan Ambarian, MTN News. The district intends to continue some on-campus services at the high schools, including food services. Families will get more information in the coming days. And the Helena YMCA created their distance learning child care program to combat issues created by the COVID-19 pandemic. But now, as the need for distance learning keeps growing, the program needs help itself. MTN's Alexia Guayo reports. The YMCA is gearing up to handle more kids as COVID-19 cases are on the rise in the Helena community. More cases means more demand for child care. The Y is trying to meet the demand with more employees. It's one of those things where I need as many people as possible. As of Thursday, the Y has four open full-time positions with many more part-time positions, but they admit they may need even more to meet the demand. They have about 80 kids in their program, almost double what they had a month ago, plus an additional 30 kids on a wait list. Alex and his staff have already dealt with employment issues just this week when East Helena's Radley Elementary went to remote learning. Uh, East Helena had closed and I opened up our rosters Monday morning and it turned out we had 10 more kids. So that scared me a little, and, but uh, we were able to weather that perfectly just fine. But it's one of those things where I got to keep growing with it because the need is going to get even bigger if we don't stay on pace with it. The Y admits if they had all the staff, they would have about 120 kids in their program. The facility can handle a max of about 180 kids. But more people means more risk for COVID-19. Alex and his team have added more precautions to the program to handle more people in the facilities. It's one of those things where we got to take the system that one of my staff put in place and take it even more serious than ever. Due to the high need of employees, Helena YMCA says they are flexible with hours and salary. Part-time workers are in about the $10 range with full-time employees in around the $14 range. In Helena, I'm Alexi Guayo, MTN News. This story is part of our Rebound Montana series, which aims to help you find solutions to challenges created by the pandemic. Now, whether it's the need for work or options to help your family with distance learning. To learn more about the jobs and the WISE program, go to ktvh.com. All right, Marion. All right. <laughs> <laughs> right? Come on. Watch that story. You got to <laughs> sing the song, right? Oh, All right, you don't let's want do it. Everybody at home. Anything. I know you want to do it. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> All right, there we go. We've got to stop this before we get sued. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, we've got a little snow and a little ice up over McDonald Pass. Had some snow showers coming through earlier. You can still see some of those snow showers working across the Bob. Boy, Lincoln was hit pretty hard with some snow showers earlier today. And looks like a couple of snow showers moving into the Helena area right now. But what I see moving forward is not as much snow, a little snow shortage. Uh, after this uh, little round of snow that's going through here tonight. We've got a bunch of sunny days moving in. We'll call it vitamin D light and looking ahead to Thanksgiving. Yeah, that bird may fly away in the wind. A little more on the forecast coming up. A composite of state and locally reported data shows Montana cases of COVID-19 increased to more than 52,800 cases, with more than 18,000 of those cases currently active. Four additional deaths have been reported, bringing the state total to 586. Now, as COVID-19 cases escalate in Montana, the disparity between state data from DPHHS and local data from county health departments continues to grow. MTN has decided to use a combination of these sources to deliver more accurate information across all media platforms. Local county health departments may be alerted to cases before Montana DPHHS. As those counties share that information with the public, MTN feels it should be reflected in our reporting. Using that local data means there will be times when MTN coronavirus data does not align with the state report. And now let's put that data in perspective. MTN's John Riley spoke with Lewis and Clark Public Health to see what numbers people should be paying the most attention to as cases rise and what that means for the community. As of Thursday, 2,048 COVID cases have been confirmed in Lewis and Clark County since the pandemic began, which equals around 3% of the population and enough people to fill every seat at the Helena Cinemark. Lewis and Clark Public Health says they always knew there was going to be cases, but a big concern right now is that 84% of all cases confirmed in the county have happened since the beginning of October. The latest data shows that we're on a really, really um, drastic spike, and a really sharp increase in cases. The daily new case incidence shows how many COVID cases are confirmed through testing. Right now, Lewis and Clark County is 11 times higher than the national average, and Montana is the fourth highest in the country. The majority of people that contract the disease are able to weather at home. However, right now, 1 in 20 Montanans that get the virus have needed to be hospitalized. And the increased risk factors for hospitalization are common in the state. 1 in 10 Montanans are living with diabetes, 1 in 4 are considered obese, and 1 in 6 Montanans are over the age of 65. The virus is also putting a strain on the hospital in more ways than one. More people are needing to be hospitalized, but also more nurses and doctors are also getting the virus too. Not experiencing spread within that setting. What's happening is people are exposed in the community and it's impacting the hospital's ability to have the adequate staff to support this community. Neiman says there are some new bright spots too. Therapeutics for treating the virus have drastically improved and two vaccines, the key to ending the pandemic, have been announced. Although realistically, we're still many months away from a vaccine being readily available to everyone. Wearing a mask, limiting interaction to those who live outside your home, and not going to work while sick are the best tools we have right now to making sure there's no more empty tables at holiday gatherings next year. Reporting in Helena, John Riley, MTN News. Well, today, the Montana Department of Commerce announced the sale of more than $52 million in bonds to help finance the construction of a new facility for Shodare Children's Hospital. The bond issuance by the Montana Facility Finance Authority will help fund a facility with 82 private rooms and allow Shodare staff to treat more patients in a healing environment. Early site preparation is happening now, and the hospital expects the new facility will be done in the summer of 2023. A public celebration for Shodare's building project is planned for May. And because of the COVID-19 pandemic, the Helena Food Share is running their annual turkey challenge online. This year, they are asking people to donate money instead of turkeys. 
Food share officials expect an increased need this year and want to raise enough money to buy 2,500 turkeys. Now to donate, head to HelenaFoodShare.org, click on the amount you want to donate, anywhere from $25 to $500, and Helena Food Share takes care of the rest. Just $25 will provide one meal for a family in need. And still ahead on the News at 6, county officials approve a long-debated zoning plan for the Helena Valley. What that means, coming up. News leader, you're watching MTN News at 6. Welcome back to the News at 6. Lewis and Clark County leaders gave final approval to a long-debated zoning plan for the Helena Valley. But the discussion over zoning regulations is far from over. The county commission unanimously approved a resolution this morning setting up urban, suburban, and rural zoning districts in the valley. They also voted to set up a community panel that will look at alternatives to the most controversial provision in the plan, a proposed 10-acre minimum lot size in rural areas. That panel will include property owners, builders, and other stakeholders. Now, during the meeting, some public commenters said they were concerned the panel's design would make it too difficult to put a new proposal forward. But commissioners said they wanted any new idea to have wide support. This is a big, heavy lift that we're talking about. But the product will be durable and it will be defensible. And we will be able to work together as a community. If you are interested in serving on that panel, you can submit a letter to the County Planning Division through December 14th. All right, now with another look at the weather, Chief Meteorologist Curtis Grevenitz. Some snow showers coming through the western part of the states, but the snow will be drying up and we've got a streak, a streak of sunny days ahead. Well, easy for me to say. More of the forecast coming up next. Her weather starts now with Chief Meteorologist Curtis Grevenitz. Welcome back, everybody. Good Thursday evening to you all. A little chill out there for uh, some areas. Great Falls chilly, but not quite as chilly as just off to the north and northeast, where we're in the 20s, about a half hour to an hour north of Great Falls. But 35 right now, southwest wind of 13 miles per hour, making it feel like 26. It's 36 in Helena, a little northwest wind, maybe even higher than five miles per hour. I just was outside walking the dog. It's a little breezy, uh, but uh, there's this boundary right here and you head again just north up there around Loma and of uh, Big Sandy, Fort Benton. We've got temperatures in the 20s. You head further north teens across north central Montana. So a bit of a chill off towards the north and the wind. Yeah, it's not the worst. It's a little pesky out there uh, gusting up to 15 20 miles per hour. We've had a little snow early this morning. We had a little ice earlier this morning up across northeast Montana, but the concentration of snow now in the western part of the state. You can see some of the snow showers moving through the Helena area over McDonald Pass up around a uh, great divide in Marysville picking up a little in the the way of some snow. Boy, Lincoln was hit really hard earlier today with a persistent snow band. Right now, it looks like just off towards the north up there around uh, Copper Creek and the scapegoat. We've got a few good snow showers. So uh, just keep that in mind if you're traveling that way and snow staying up on the Rocky Mountain fronts. Uh, nice snow up there at Teton Pass as well. And it's really the northern tier of the country dealing with uh, any little precipitation elsewhere. It is uh, very, very quiet. For Montana, the snow showers will quiet down here through the overnight hours. But again, if you're traveling up some of the mountain passes, uh, cold temperatures, some additional snow showers here this evening uh, through the overnight and the snow will stick on the roads here. So uh, might be just a little on the slippery side, not dry pavement everywhere, but Speaking of dry, very dry and nice and sunny. Vitamin D light here for Friday, Saturday and Sunday as well. Looking at mostly sunny skies here. We'll go all the way into uh, Saturday here and you can see mostly sunny skies. The Bear Paws, the Little Rockies may have a couple of snow showers around Saturday morning. Otherwise, uh, that hardly any clouds in the sky on Saturday. Snowfall amounts again here west of the divide and north of the Lincoln area up there around Sealy Lake. There could be another couple of inches of snow, especially into the higher terrain. Now let's go through Sunday. Mostly sunny skies, really nice day again, a little breezy into the plains. Here we are into Monday, a minor system mainly going through the western part of the state with some snow showers there. Uh, Tuesday, mostly cloudy. It's the warm before the storm. 
much of the state into the 40s and the 50s even. Strong southwest winds here and watch what happens here to overnight Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. There will be a front that moves through the state here. There could be a burst of snow, especially in the western mountains. Not much in the lower elevations east of the divide here uh, through Wednesday. Most of uh, the day will be very windy for the majority of the state here, so that could affect travel and then getting into Thanksgiving. Here we are 2 30. Uh, in the afternoon, maybe a couple of mountain snow showers northwest Montana, but most of the state will be blustery and mostly sunny. So it's a pretty nice Thanksgiving with high temperatures in the 30s to around 40 degrees. And then Friday looking pretty nice here. A little more of a southwest flow and temperatures will start to go back above average for Friday and Saturday. Tonight, chilly stuff, not the coldest we've ever seen, but some temperatures getting down uh, into the single digits up on the high line. Uh, 20s and 30s elsewhere. Teens. It's always colder in Boulder, 19 degrees down there. And here is the uh, forecast for tomorrow. Mostly sunny, highs in the 30s and the 40s, uh, breezy across the plains. Getting into Saturday, mostly sunny, breezy across the plains. Deja vu all over again. And then for Sunday, mostly sunny, maybe a few degrees warmer, getting up into the mid 40s here and not much, if any, snow. Now looking at Monday, there's that little disturbance in the western part of the state with a couple of snow showers there. There may be a few flurries in Helena and Great Falls coming in on Monday. But uh, for right now, that looks fairly dry over the next uh, several days. Mostly sunny Friday, Saturday and Sunday, mostly cloudy Monday and Tuesday. But Thanksgiving right now looking very nice with high temperatures. Temperatures again in the 30s to about 40 degrees. West winds maybe up to 15 miles per hour. So should be a pretty nice day to be outside on Thanksgiving. And uh, there you see Great Falls a little on the windy side. Temperatures in the 40s, even 50 on Tuesday. Thanksgiving 38 degrees, uh, blustery. But uh, overall, at all the weather we've seen in Thanksgiving in years past, that looking pretty good. All right, thanks for that, Curtis. Coming up, the latest on sports betting here in Montana. Montana's News Leader. You're watching MTN News at 6. Welcome back to the News at 6. Just as the Carroll College men's basketball team was getting ready to host their first home game of the season, they got some bad news. The stands of the PE Center will be nearly empty. On November 13th, the Frontier Conference stated in their return to play policy that no spectators will be allowed at conference sporting events until 2021. Carroll College Athletics confirmed in a press release that they will not allow spectators at Friday's matchup against Dickinson State. Though spectators will not be able to attend games in person, Carroll College Athletics will be streaming their games live on their YouTube channel. And the Montana Lottery has decided not to appeal a ruling from a Helena judge that said that they could not require a business to have a liquor license in order to offer sports wagering. In October, District Court Judge Kathy Seely ruled in favor of Arite Group, a Billings investment group, who challenged the Lottery Commission, adding additional restrictions that were not in the original registration. While Seely ruled in their favor, she also stated the group was not entitled to get a sports wagering license and would need to go through the application process. In announcing their decision not to appeal, the Montana Lottery also noted the um, under the administrative rules of Montana, lottery tickets or chances may be sold at any place of business in Montana that is not engaged in business exclusively as a lottery ticket or chance sales agent. So in other words, in their interpretation, sports wagering could not be the only aspect of a business. All right, and we'll wrap things up here on the News at 6 when we come back. Montana's News Leader. You're watching MTN News at 6. Welcome back, and as usual, we saved the most fun story for last. A big-eyed traveler hitched a ride of more than three hours nestled inside the Christmas tree that ended up at Rockefeller Center. The truck driver said he found the baby owl staring at him while he was setting up the iconic 75-foot tree. The owl, of course, is now named Rockefeller and will be released back into the wild once he recovers. 
Those little sawy towels are only about five inches fully grown. Uh, certainly a cute little guy there, but uh, Great Falls. Look at the seven day forecast here. A little on the breezy side, but hey, we've got uh, comfortable temperatures, a little even above average and mostly sunny skies through the weekend. Thanksgiving also looking mostly sunny and for Helena. Pretty nice weekend and Friday ahead and Thanksgiving. All right, and that does it for the news at six. We'll see you back here tonight at 10. Thanks for watching.